I'm going to be showing you guys how I edit and process my portraits. For this tutorial, I have this picture and then another two pictures of the of the similar pose, um, which I'll be using to kind of complete this image. We're going to focus a little more on coloring, but I do want to get into some technicalities here. Where, for instance, one thing that's bugging me about this picture is that it's cropped a little strange to the left or ear. So I have a backup picture right here where her shoulder is showing. So this will be great for when I want to add it into this picture. So actually, let's start and do that first. So I'm going to actually just duplicate this layer and then go to image canvas size. And then we're going to add more width because we want this canvas to be larger on both ends. So you're just going to go ahead and make it. Like, I just estimate. I just put in 15. So you hit OK. Obviously, now you can see that it gives you more space on the outside. And I simply just turned off the background because I like to work in separate layers. I don't like to be chained down. So we're going to go back to this picture right here. And again, this works great for my other picture. So we're just going to take a huge chunk. Even if you're not going to use the whole chunk, just take as much as you can because you can just mask it out later. So just go ahead and go to copy and then go back to your other picture. And now we're going to kind of piece this together. It's kind of like you're making a really weird collage. So obviously you don't want her shoulders to be out like that because then she's just going to look strange. So you want it to you want to kind of like eyeball this, which I'm going to do right now and hopefully it won't look a little won't look too weird. Okay, why is it There we go. So I think this looks okay. That looks pretty good. It's just that over here she's slanted, so that's not too bad. I just want a little bit of the black showing. So now what you're going to do is you're going to make a mask on this layer by clicking this little thing right here, add layer mask. And then you are going to make sure that it is black. I'm just up the opacity right here. And you're just going to lightly take out some of that. And I know this doesn't match here, but we'll fix that in just a second. Actually, I'm going to keep that just for... And you are going to want to be careful when doing this because you don't want to erase any vital sections, but you don't want to keep a lot of it either. So I'm literally just keeping the sides of this. And the hair is going everywhere, so I'm not really sure that it's too much of an issue if you get rid of it. I mesh it in with the hair that's already in here. So I think it looks pretty good. And I literally think that looks a million times better already. Just to be careful, I like to make sure that this is good. Now when I'm trying to like fade stuff out like hair, I'll usually go to a lower opacity, but I think this is okay now that I'm I got the general gist of it. And I'm gonna that this hair area right here is a little weird. I don't know what's going on up here. I guess that doesn't look so bad. Hair is supposed to be messing anyways. Okay. So, her obviously was bigger. Let me see the difference. It wasn't that much bigger. It's actually a little more tame now. Okay, so now I have a, a more complete picture. Another thing that I'm actually going to do is duplicate the first layer and then drag it up. And then I want to mat. I'm gonna invert this mask, and then literally just mask up because I want that hair. I want the the hair how it was in the original. So I'm just gonna mask out that part of the hair. And I'm sorry if I jumped really far. Basically, what I did 
is I duplicated the main layer, which was the whole, the original picture. So I'm duplicating this. I'm bringing this to the top. And then I'm inverting it so that nothing shows. And then I'm masking out the area of the first picture, this original picture that I want to see. So I'm literally just showing the pieces of the first picture that I want to show, which is the hair. Hopefully I explained that well. Masks are really confusing. Personally for me, I'm not going to lie, it took me a good couple months to really master ma Like I, it just, it's extremely difficult for some people to um, master some technical aspects of Photoshop. It's, it's, they're not, everything's not easy. So it just takes time. You just got to practice. But literally pressing Command I, you can toggle the layer on and off. So just play with it and, you know, get used to it because it's something you're going to need to learn how to use. So what you're going to notice now is this top part doesn't really match with the rest of the picture. This can be corrected easily. Make a new layer. So you can press this little icon over here. And then you're going to go to the clone stamp. I'm going to make it a little bigger than that. And you're actually just going to take the pieces that you want. Like I want to take this area right here because it's a nice open area. And you're just going to drag it. And you see where the crosshair is? That's actually where it's sampling from. And as you can see, see I'm coloring it over here. And that's what you don't want. So actually, I'm going to take a smaller portion this time. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to sample from another area. You're just pressing ALT. You're holding ALT to where you want to copy. So I want to copy this area, and then you're just stamping to wherever you want. And you see, now that matches a little more. So you're just going to do this. Another thing, if you really wanted to do this another way, you could simply do this. Copy merged. And then you just paste this in and then erase around the edges. But, I mean, or you could make this bigger and then just mask out that part. But. It's really up to you which way you want to tackle it. This is just an easier way for me. I'm going to copy this on the opacity 99 so that it matches with the rest of that. Adding in some little pieces in there. And I think that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do, since I'm satisfied with that, is I'm going to go ahead and, and crop out this area to make my new photo. And then, of course, what I always do after I make a huge change like that is I save the picture. But I just actually want to go over everything and make sure everything is fine. Let me see if those shoulders are okay. They're pretty good. Actually, I think I'm going to change this area right here. It looks a little strange. Maybe I'm just looking at it too much. No, I think that's okay. So, picture looks good. I'm go, going to go ahead and save this in my folder. Now that we have this saved, I'm going to go ahead and show you the before and the after. This is the before, and that's the after. Huge difference already. I think that makes the picture look a lot better. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start colorizing this picture. And I'll let you guys see exactly what I'm doing. I'll try to go over some stuff, but I usually just go and experiment with all the colors and test out how everything looks on the picture before I really... Um, make any final decisions so um there's no steps that I take to do this I just literally just sit and experiment so I'll just let you guys um, watch and see how I do things I usually start with curves and play with the tones a little bit 
And already, just by playing with curves, you can already see it's making a huge difference. Kind of like that. I'm going to go on over to Selective Color and add some more texture to her face. And I will literally go through each and every tab for Selective Color just because each color does a different thing. So you have to try them all out, I guess. You don't have to, but I like to, just to be on the safe side. As you can see, that made a very subtle change, but it really did make a difference. So it's bringing back some details in the face right here. Probably do that more than once. Another cool thing is if you go to blacks and then you take away some yellow, it leaves a really nice blue tone, like colors, those black areas blue, so I think that's kind of nice. Let's go to channels. When you go to channels, make sure that you're selecting the image. I'm just going to go and copy merged, go back, and then paste it on the top. And it'll always give me like a cool effect. Your screen, if you want to get like a high key picture, this is what I would recommend putting up to screen. I'm just adding some more red in the picture. And again, this is my process. I'll literally toggle back and forth with, with each layer and see how it looks. Another thing that I like to do is go to, go to my gradient map and then see how different colors look with it. For instance, if you wanted like a more vintage look, you could do purple, pink, and yellow and white, and then just lower the opacity. It kind of leaves behind some of those colors, which is kind of nice. You could also do color if you wanted to, which kind of looks nice on here. So if you zoom out and then you see the difference, even zooming right here. It's all what kind of color, it all depends on what kind of colors you like. But again, gradient map is great for experimenting with um, specific colors. If you want, if you have specific colors in mind, definitely would do that. Another thing that I like to do is go to um, what is it? Uh, black and white. And then just pull down and take away some color so that. Well, sometimes you want to do this, sometimes not. So I'm just toggling back and forth with each layer that I just made. I'm going to show you guys the original so that you can see the difference. Again, this is, I just completely did all this right now. I didn't pre-plan this or anything. So, 
let's do some other cool stuff like lens flare, like a fake lens flare maybe. That'd be kind of cool. So I would usually pick a white color to begin with. And you want to make sure the opacity, I like to start really low. And with just one swipe, and I'm using a tablet for this, usually do the trick. And the thing with lens flare is it's going to be messy no matter what. It's not going to be perfect. It's not supposed to be. For the second one, I'm going to go ahead and use screen. And you don't even have to use this to make it look like lens flare. You can literally just set your layer to screen. Use a huge brush and then just go over your picture and it kind of gives it like a cool screen look. It, look. it looks like a lighter picture. I'm really, I'm obviously bad at explaining things. <laughs> and then I like to use overlay too. Just because it pops out more color. And I'm using um, these, I don't even know what color this is, like a... I don't even know what I'll call it, beige, like a dark beige. How am, I, how am I a graphic designer? I don't even know my colors. So I'll show you the differences. That's from the overlay layer, and this is from screen. So I'm literally just playing around in screen. And let me show you the before and after with without one splare. So it kind of gives it a nice look. So I think I'm going to keep it. So I think that's not bad. So here's the before and there's the after. So I hope that you guys took away from this something. I usually will just do a, like a fast tutorial where it just shows me working but I wanted to kind of break it down and show you guys step by step and I'm sorry if I went past something or didn't explain something but I'm not used to having to explain everything that I do so if you have any questions just ask in the comments and I will be more than happy to help. Thanks for watching.